Ready, Dave? All right, all right, all right. Eric Feeney here, Feeney Talks With Friends. Episode 21, number one of season three. You're number one of season three. I have a great guest here, Derek Slap, state senator. I'm excited to talk with him, but first let's review. Again, Eric Feeney, founder of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that have heartbreak or tragedy. I use this avenue, thanks to my buddy Dave at Direct Line Media, to talk with great people from our community that are doing wonderful things for people. And our guest today does wonderful things for people, ladies and gentlemen. And to review episode 20, Anissa Teich from Weha Coworking. Do you know her, Anissa? I, I don't know if I do, yeah. Yeah, but she's that, great. She sounds amazing. She takes care of small businesses. She offers a location for people to do their work. She has different options of desks. I think we're Facebook friends. There you go. So, yeah, but we need to get acquainted. Yeah. Okay, I'll introduce you. I'll Perfect. Be. Friends, Facebook friends. Friends of Feeney. Now you're friends of Feeney. So. But um, Anissa, thank you so much. Check it out. She's on um, New Park Avenue, right down the street from Direct Line Media. So here we are, season one. Uh, excuse me, episode one of season three. We did 21 episodes, Derek. What do you think? That's incredible. You yeah. stuck with it, you know? <laughs> and each one's better and better, right? Yes, yes. No, they are getting better, actually. That is really cool, actually. I started off shaky, got some suggestions. Not enough shout outs, too many shout outs, need a game, no games, but it's all about the guest. So you're bringing it today. Wow. No, no right. pressure. Well, I know. I feel like a little nervous. You know? <laughs> so, no, that's very cool. Yeah. And, and I appreciate uh, Dave and, and you and just, you know, spending your, um, your time and energy and effort to make the uh, community better. It's awesome. Yeah. No, I love West Hartford. I uh, moved here 12 years ago when my wife was pregnant with twins. Yep. Um, the neighbor, my neighbor was Plato. He was the pr uh, principal of Wilkett School. And, okay. and you know, I was like, I'll paint your house. I'll mow your lawn. Get me a job. Five years go by. He's like, I got good news and bad news. Good news, uh, I can get you an interview. Bad news, I'm retiring. So I was like, fine. I got in. Yep. I started fifth grade the same year my daughter started kindergarten. So I was at the same school with my children. It was like a dream come true. You wow. can't beat it. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of kids, you have three children? Yep, three. Yep. Do you have them? Do you have elementary, middle, high? Is that how? It... Uh, last year I had yeah one at Duffy, one at Sedgwick, and one at Connor. Now I have two at Connor, so I have a uh, junior yep. and a first year. Um, I'm not so I'm not supposed to say freshman, just oh, so really? you know. My daughter says first year, which is cool. And then I have a third grader, uh, Charlie. Very so, cool. Maggie, Zoe, and Charlie. Yep. Maggie, Zoe, and Charlie. That's right. Awesome names. Well, hi, Maggie, Zoe, and Charlie. I met Charlie. He came to the Donut Crazy fundraiser. That's there, right. Yeah. There's a picture. I'm going to add it to the website on this podcast. Actually, it's us three. Charlie. Awesome. You were a celebrity server. Uh, wow. You were one of the only to do double duty back-to-back -back champions. So you did a... You are a celebrity server at Arita's. Yeah. Rita's Italian Ice on New Britain Avenue. Yeah. In June of 2019, you were a server. How was your experience, Rita's? Did you... Like making the ice cream or uh, scooping out the Italian ice. It was good, yeah. It, uh, you know, it was. Um, I remembered some of the jobs that I had right yeah. throughout my throughout my uh, upbringing. So that was good. Anytime that you have something, I I try to go. So yeah. cause, I mean, I want to support you and and the mission any way I can. Yeah. No, you were very supportive. Um, speaking of jobs, what jobs did you have as a kid? Well, um, I had a job as a bagger at a um, grocery store, uh, Food Mart, nice. uh, which was in Springfield, Mass. <laughs> uh, I worked at a sporting goods store for a long time, Fenton's, which is a, they don't really have a small family owned sporting goods store, you yep. know, kind of, this is before like Dick's came along and all that. Um, yeah, so those, those were some of them, but you know, probably like you, you just do uh, yeah. catering, mowing lawns, I did a lot of that. Um, but yeah, so, but the, the grocery store one was, uh, that was intense. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, I was a paper boy, fifth grade to like yep. ninth grade. And then I worked at 7-Eleven, always raked and shoveled. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. And then again, you were a celebrity server at Donut Crazy in March, 2020. So um, you got a favorite donut? Uh Anything with big chocks of chunk uh, of chocks. I'm trying to, I'm having trouble talking here with uh, <laughs> chunks of chocolate. That's tough to say. Um, nice. Yes. And it's cool when you do ones with food because 
that, you know, I always try to get my kids to come with me to yeah. the political events and it's hard, but if there's food involved like that, they're there. Yeah. Charlie was all about the donut that oh, day. All about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was like as big as his head, you know? Yeah. That, that's good stuff down there. Yeah. And thanks, Irene. Irene is episode 10 of Feeney Talks with Friends. Right. She's doing wonderful things. She's actually um, selling shirts and her staff on Saturdays where Saturdays are for friends. Oh, wow. Shirts. And you can community goes in and buys them. So again, like I could mention so many people in this community uh, like yourself that are just caring, thoughtful and want to do right. Mm -hmm. And that's the main reason of starting this podcast. Um, so again, thank you. Of course. Yeah. And you're a state senator. Yes, um, this is the first full term. So nice. uh, my predecessor, Beth Bai, who many people know in the community, uh, she um, left the state Senate to become the commissioner of, for uh, the Office of Early Childhood. So I was a state rep at the time and, um, you know, said this is a great opportunity. And I'd already worked at the state Senate. So I was a chief of staff for a while and communications director with the state Senate. So I felt like I could hit the ground running. I knew where the bathrooms were, so to speak, you know, and, and I could get right in there and, and, you know, keep doing good things. So, um, it's been, yeah, it's been great. So what are, if you were to give advice, someone wants to be a state center, top three things, what should that person, you know, some attributes, characteristics, what make a good state Senator? Ooh, three right. things. Yeah. Okay. Well, three. So what's interesting about this job and maybe there's, you know, there's other jobs that are like this. There's three very distinct skill sets that you need. One, you have to get elected, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, there's that piece of it. Then there's constituent services. So, um, and that's a lot of what we do. And it's not like the stuff that, you know, real controversial bills, but it's just helping people with DMV, helping people, especially through this last year with the pandemic, of helping them get, you know, um, their unemployment benefits because a lot of people never filed before. They had no idea how to go through the process. So, so it's just that kind of listening, constituent service things. And then the, Final piece of it, and this is not in any particular order, but is um, being a policymaker of crafting a bill. And that takes, you know, um, skills with building consensus, relationship building, listening to people. Um, I try to approach it with a, uh, intellectual humility and curiosity. So we're a citizen legislature. We're part time, you know, theoretically, even though it's way more than part time. But so we're not necessarily like experts in the field, you know, so we have to listen and we have to, um, you know, say, well, look, I, one, me personally, I don't have all the answers, but also I would say one political party doesn't have all the answers either, you know, and that usually the best legislation we get is when we're compromising and listening to each other. So there's those three different things yep. that you have to try to be able to, you know, do all of them. Um, and if you're doing it right, I think you're you're doing a lot of listening um, and probably like any other business line or profession, um, your word is really important. You know, so like when you say you're going to do something, you got to do it and you got to follow through. You know, those things are really important. Yeah, no, I agree. And I see some bills. So our motto is be a good friend. Can you think of some bills that really fall into our theme of being a good friend? Uh, for example, um, I see that you did a safety on college, domestic uh, violence, um, anti-aging stuff, school safety stuff. Those are all considered like be it, you're helping everyone to become a good friend. Do you have any that stand out or that have been recently talked about? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned the, uh, the age discrimination bill, and <clears throat> that's something that... Um, it's funny, you know, being a good friend, if you can be a good friend, that helps get legislation passed, too, because um, the best ideas uh, come from constituents. So that idea about um, dealing with age discrimination came from a constituent who was older and was in his 70s and had gone back to school, and was applying for jobs. And he would be asked frequently on um, the application uh, to list what year he graduated high school and what year he graduated from college, et cetera. And it's not too difficult to do the math and determine, oh, you graduated high school, you know, right? In uh, 91, that's the case for me. Yep. So you're 47. Yep. And he was saying, why, you know, when I get asked that and then I never get callbacks, right? I'm being vetted, I felt like, this is what he's saying, based on my age. 
And why do they have to ask that? At least if they didn't ask it in the initial applications, it'd be easier for him to get to the interview you know, okay. process and get your foot in the door. And so, um, so I said, that makes a lot of sense. So I worked with AARP, engaged the business community um, and said, look, you know, discrimination is bad for business. And by the way, like, you don't want people doing this anyway because it opens you up for lawsuits. And they agreed and they're like, we don't need this information. So I introduced the bill three years ago and you know, it takes a while like to get momentum and to educate people and build consensus. We had it in a good spot last year. Session was canceled because of the pandemic. Yep. Two weeks ago, we passed it in the Senate. I believe it was 34 to nothing in the Senate. Oh, wow. So it was bipartisan and moved you know, a lot of people to, to get there. And so now it's awaiting action in the House. But we'll be a national leader in helping to um, protect older workers. Anyone from 40 over faces age discrimination, starts earlier for women, women of color, really impacted by it. So it's a good way to just um, make sure that people are treated fairly. And I guess that goes back to your question in no. terms of like, you know, how would you want to treat a, your friend, right? Or how would you want yeah. your best friend to be treated? Yeah. I like it. That's being a good friend. So. Good job, Derek. Slott. Well, thank you. It'll be good. And, you know, we're one of the few states that'll do that. And a constituent brought that to your attention? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And um, that happens a lot, you know, with... Uh, all sorts of different bills. I mean, I could go on and on different bills, but the, the, that's the way. It's about being a citizen legislature. Yeah. And so we do our job the best. We're doing a lot of listening. So if you want to reach out to Derek, can I shout out? It was on the website, so it's probably Absolutely. free to shout it out, right? Absolutely. Slap at senatedems.ct.gov is yeah. your email. That's my email. 860-240-1436. Yep. That's your number at the Capitol. Yep. And your cell phone. How many, yep. how many cell phones do you have? I just have one. Come on. That's it. Wow. Really? All right. Cell phone, 860-519-9672. Yeah. People call you on the cell phone. They do. Yeah. They call me. All and, right. uh, you know. Hit them on the hip. Yeah. Hit my wife at first is like, you're, you're, are you really doing this? You're <laughs> yeah. giving out your cell phone? But you know what? It's, I don't ever want to make somebody cynical about government and be like, oh, I could never get a hold of this person. And, you know, so I just said, go ahead if you need it. And it's been fine. Yeah. Very cool. All right, call him up. And you're into the, uh, on the, you're not the vice president, but you may chair the educational department. Um, oh, the commission? higher ed. Higher ed. Yeah, so I just got named the chair of the higher ed uh, and employment advancement committee. So um, that's in, in uh, Connecticut. We have joint committees. So in other words, the House and the Senate were on the same committee. So I have a co chair who's a member of the House. And then I'm the Senate chair of higher ed. So we work on, we have cognizance, which is kind of a government word, I guess, but uh, over, you know. Can you um, explain that to those that are listening and sitting across from you? What, what was that? Yeah, cognizance, right? So we, it means like, what, what is, what do we oversee? Like what's in our jurisdiction, so to speak? Gotcha. And it's higher education in the state of Connecticut. So, you know, the community colleges, the central, the southerns, all that, it's, UConn, it's actually the private independent schools too, to some degree as well. There's nice. 11 of those, the private occupational schools. So oh, wow. it's, um, you know, it's, it's pretty big. We wanna make sure that there's a pipeline for employment, that, you know, we have great institutions of higher ed. And a lot of times the students who go to them, 70% um, on average stay in Connecticut for the, the public ones. So it's a great way to, you know, help our economy and keep the younger folks here if we have really great institutions of higher ed. Very cool. How are you helping out Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven? How? Shout out to the Fighting Owls. Yeah. Hoot, hoot. Owls. Yeah, that was a Owls. tough ma mascot. You, you an owl too? Yeah, okay, Dave. Look I, I always this. liked you, Dave. Yeah. We Dave's have an owl too. All right. And do you, you guys have like a, the mascot anywhere around here? I feel like is the mascot going to jump in. The, <laughs> yeah. you know? the owl is going to come out dancing. I know that, that would be cool. <laughs> well, first, you know, we, we got to have adequate funding, of course, and that's super important. Um, and so uh, we're doing that. Um, we're <clears throat> working on a bill to, um, in fact, we just, uh, we just passed uh, one uh, about uh, representation on uh, the Board of Regents and the uh, the Board of Trustees to make sure um, that the budgeting is, is fair and transparent as well. So there's a whole host of issues and to make sure that um, 
the institutions I hired like Southern know what our business community needs, right? Like, okay, we need, you know, in the next 10 years, we're gonna need people with these types of degrees, right? So we can make sure those two things are aligned, essentially. Okay. Um, so those are some of them. But Is that know. something that you, do you have to campaign for these spots as well? Like you can't, like a door knock to get elected, do you have to like, to get chair or do you just get picked? How's that work? Oh, to be, for your position in, um, well, so it's because up to- Because you have this, that background knowledge, maybe? Uh, yeah, I used to work at UConn at the foundation, so maybe that was part of the reason. But um, ultimately, the Senate president, uh, that's up to, in this case, Marty Looney, uh, he's the Senate president, so he appoints uh, you know, the chairs. And so it's good to have a good working relationship with them. And you yeah. know, we, I've known him for many, many years, and you spend time talking about education and higher ed and make sure that your, your yeah. kind of visions um, align. That's really cool. You were running or campaigning or working on advertising or a campaign. I met you with a bunch of teachers outside of Duffy for a photo shoot. <laughs> That's right. I never got on a flyer or, or um, a postcard. You know, I'm a little hurt. Was it me? Was there something I could have done better? Was mm. I not? No, I'm kidding. No, I think I think you. I mean, that you, like, see, you're my secret weapon. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to use you too quickly. You know, like when I have a really tough race coming up, all right, it's just gonna be all Eric. Yes, everywhere. there we go. Yeah. yeah. No, speaking of which, I just got this yesterday. Very cool. Oh yeah. No, actually, not yesterday. Saturday. Right. Delivering during a crisis, and that's where I got your number and your email, but. Your voice counts, delivering to a crisis. Yeah, so and I put you. my contact information right on there. there. So if you have an idea for a, for a bill, for legislation, or getting rid of something, sometimes there's some uh, some things that don't make any sense anymore. Yeah, you know? and then you service West Hartford, Farmington, and a little portion of Bloomfield. Yeah, and, and then, mo right, so let's see, Burlington. Oh, Burlington, too. Burlington, a sliver of Bloomfield, most of Farmington, and then all of West Hartford. One of my great friends lives in Burlington, so listen, you need something, I know. That's right. I know Derek. Friends you of Feeney. You got the hookup. You go straight to me. All right, buddy. Yeah. She's a, his wife's a teacher too. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, okay. My friend Lisa. All right, Lisa. Where does she teach? She is in. She teaches at Avon. Okay. Um, not exactly. She's. Um, uh, come on, early education. So pre K. Oh yeah. 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 Wonderful person. I graduated high school with her. She's definitely a good friend. And Great. she's in Burlington. So. Well, I'm grateful for what she does, for what you do. My wife is a teacher, too. She okay. teaches music in Canton. She, oh, no way. Uh, I didn't know that. Music tech. All right. So, um, boy, what you guys do normally is amazing, but this past year, holy smokes, with like the, yeah. the dual teach, I mean, just all the stuff that I, I hope you never have to do again, by the way. Yeah. But thank you. It was a lot. It was like two jobs because, uh, you know, the kids were having a half day, so you had in person till yep. maybe one. And then we had the kids that were home, we had to set them up with work. And then when the kids left school at one, we had to get online with the kids that have been home all day at like 1.30 right. and bring the energy with them. So there's really no time to ex exhale and be like, oof, that long day, kids were in person. You gotta bring the same energy with the kids that were home. So it was like two jobs, two different classrooms. So, but, um, I was elementary school, so they came back all in a little right. sooner than the middle school that we're yep. still alternating. But uh, a very challenging year, but we got through it, and it's, I love my students, and love my school, and the principal's phenomenal, so that's all Well, that what you guys, that is amazing. And I know there's many, many districts across the country that are not in still, yeah. right? So yeah. I think we're so fortunate to be um, in West Hartford and Connecticut where you know the kids have been yeah. in, right? Like my three-year-old, it's tough for him to learn virtually. Like he needs to, I think he needs to be in school, you know? Wait, who's your three-year-old? I'm sorry, my third grader, I meant okay. uh, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. No, 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 virtual learning, I was second grade. You yeah. know, I get a lot of nostrils. Uh, I have to have show, I have to end every time with show and tell. I have to see your dog and your <laughs> toys, super cute. I love all of them. Right, right. Um, but it's, it's challenging. They need the in-person, the, you know. But all this teacher talk, you have a favorite teacher Mrs. of all time? Mrs. Schwabby. Schwabby? Yeah. I elementary or no? Elementary. Um, yeah. I, and I'm not just saying that, you know. But. No, I, honestly, everyone has sat in your chair, I think, has always mentioned an elementary school yeah. teacher. Yeah. So that makes me very happy, and, and I'm proud to be an elementary. 
Well, I was like Joe Biden in that uh, I had a stuttering, uh, not not a really bad stuttering problem, but I also had, um, I needed uh, some speech therapy. I would mess up my words, like I would say who's and hocks instead of shoes and socks and that kind of thing. And, um, and I was very self-conscious about it. And um, I remember that uh, Mrs. Schwabi, she had this big rocking chair and we'd have story time. And I remember we'd all sit around and she'd um, read stories to us and we would sing songs together. And she was so um, compassionate and didn't make me feel uh, self-conscious and gave me the courage to go and get speech therapy. Um, and, uh, and that was pretty cool. And then later on in my, my life, my career, I went on to be a, a newscaster. And uh, I never would have done that without Ms. Schwab. Wow. So she was- uh, What grade? Uh, it, that was uh, fourth grade. Was she the fourth grade teacher or was she the speech pathologist? Uh, fourth grade teacher. Gotcha. Uh, Sumner Avenue School, Springfield, Mass. Springfield too, nice. Yeah, right. yeah. Did you, and you got in-school services for the speech or outside services? Right. Um, I think I did both. Yeah, I remember my mother was very, you know, was very good at, uh, at helping me with that. But yeah, it was something, you know, you feel kind of self-conscious about. Yeah, so you mentioned, well, shout out to Mrs. Schwabi. You said, did you reach out back to her later down the road when you were a TV anchor? Did you say that? No, no? I didn't. I probably should have. I mean, I'd reached out to her, I think, er earlier, but yeah. um, Well, send her to the link of the podcast. Thank you, Mrs. Schwabi. You're a good friend. You're a wonderful teacher. She really was, yeah. And uh, yeah, well, how about the TV anchor? So how long did you do that and for where? I did that for about 10 years. so I got out of school at Syracuse and I went for broadcasting. And my first job was actually at CNN uh, Headline News as a writer. So I would see all these uh, anchors coming back from all over the world and they would be, you know, be um, reporting and anchoring. I said, that's what I want to do. I didn't want to just be a producer kind of behind the scenes. So um, I rented a camera crew because uh, I needed to do a new resume tape. And so we had a camera crew and I went around Atlanta and did these stories for my reel, you know, and sent it around and um, got a job in Panama City, Florida nice. uh, at the Fox affiliate. So I did that for a year, Tallahassee, NBC for two years, and then uh, the NBC affiliate up here in Hartford for close to six years. So, um, yeah, about a decade in broadcasting. Very nice. Yeah. On screen? Yeah, yeah. So, so were you with, like Mike Tirico, Bob Costas, and uh, who else is Syracuse? They're all Syracuse, all the guys on A TV. lot of the sports guys, are, and that's actually what I went to Syracuse. What I originally thought is that I wanted to do sports journalism. So, um, but you're right. Yeah, Bob Costas, Dick Stockton. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, uh, half of ESPN, yeah. it seems like, yeah, I went to Syracuse for that. That's cool. So, all right, so another game. So you're on the air, TV anchor. Can you recall some stories or even your reels? Anywhere that you've anchored, what was your yeah. best one, your worst one, your first one, and your last one? Oh, gosh, those are good. All right, so I don't know if it's a particular order. I will tell you that. So at CNN Headline News, we were all out of journalism school. And the way that it worked is that you did you have to take writing tests there to do more and more of the writing and when you first got there you did uh, teleprompter you did behind the scenes stuff you know and then you worked your way up into a bigger role so um my shift started at 7 a.m on a like saturday you know include so including the weekend so i remember one day that and you could do instant messages to your friends once you were on the computer system so we got pretty confident, pretty like lackadaisical. So as we're in the intro to the show, right? So the show is, you know, starting, okay? And the anchor's there and everything. And I'm just logging on to the show to go into the script because I'm doing teleprompter, yep. right? Because I'm instant messaging my friends. Oh, did you go out last night? Yeah, what time <laughs> did you get back? Right, that kind of thing. So, I mean, and this is like 10 seconds till the show starts and it's headline news like all over the world. And I, um, so I go into the show and the anchor starts reading the script, right? And they're reading stories and there's no video for the stories. And then they're like, so-and-so has more, but there's no tape. And it turns out I had gone into the 7 p.m. show Ooh. the night before, <laughs> not 7 a.m., which was the show we were actually doing. So the show just, it's a, like 
a disaster. <laughs> and uh, the anchor finally just bails and says, we'll be right back. And they just go to black. And the director and the producer are in the, the booth, you know, the, and one of them starts coming out and they are so mad at, <laughs> at me, understandably. And the anchor s- stopped them right away and said, stop, don't say another word, turn around, don't say anything to him. And so they, they went back, she goes, if you ever do that to me again, I will kill you. She was so mad, but she protected me. So that was a big screw yeah. up. Yeah. Um, anyways, I wasn't there much longer. Learning lesson. Learning lesson. <laughs> um, so prob- safe to say that's the worst. That would be the worst, yeah. Um, I mean, we all have our bloopers, no yeah, question. Yeah, of course. Um, so probably the, one of the most meaningful things was right after 9-11, um, when I went down to New York City and reported there for a week and just, there was a story on like every single corner. I remember um, there were so many stories and I would be like, let's say in the five o'clock news, 5 p.m. And I had already, and I wasn't slated, let's say to be in the six o'clock too. And I would be tagging, like, so I'd be on the air talking about, and I'd say, and coming up at six, I'll show you blah, blah, blah. And the news uh, producer would go, wait a minute, you know, we didn't have you in at six. I'm like, you got to put me in at six. I, there's another amazing story, like an example of um, we did a story. There's a homeless shelter and, you know, these people are homeless. They didn't have a lot to give, but they were standing in line at a blood bank to give blood because they were so compelled to help first responders out. Like New York City at that time, you know, you're talking like a day to, you know, a week after 9-11 was just. It was unbelievable. And we just knew we were reporting on like the first draft of history, you know, at that time. Yeah. So that was that was great um, to be able to feel like you were lifting up people's voices. You know, that's fe- that's phenomenal. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember exactly where I was that day. I was at Southern Connecticut State in library media class learning teacher learning to do read alouds. Yep. Overheard that planes flew into the towers, went back, saw my girlfriend, who is now my wife. and She's like crying, hysterical. Um, and she lost her uncle, Uncle Joe. Oh, no. Yeah, so God bless Uncle Joe. Yeah. Um, Joe Zaccoli. And, uh, we, you know, he has three children. And, and it just can't, a day doesn't go by where the family's not talking about how good spirited. He was a Knicks fan. So, like, they're making the playoffs. And we're all thinking about Joe. And just, um, so, yeah, thank you for sharing those stories. And thank you for getting the word out there on, on families and people. That was awesome. So that was your best. And that was a phenomenal thing that you did. So you got first and last. Oh, for, yeah, okay. All right, well, all right, here's another um, mess up. Because, you know, we learn <laughs> a lot. In many ways, we learn more from our mistakes, of I course. think, in life than our, uh, our accomplishments. So the first show that I anchored, this was at the Fox affiliate in Panama City, and they did not have a teleprompter operator. So your, which, what, the teleprompter was you controlled it with a foot pedal. Right. And as you were anchoring, you're also, you know, with the foot Making pedal. it roll down. Right. And so and it's, it was a paper teleprompter and there was a camera it was like on a conveyor belt and behind the cameras. And there was no camera operator. That was the director. So he set the cameras, went back into the control room. You had to control it with your foot. Oh, wow. So the first show I'm doing and this is, you know, live, the whole the paper jams. I'm like. <laughs> Stomping on the, you know, the, the teleprompter, the conveyor belt, they go, you know, just scrunches up, total disaster. Um, and actually, that was good to know that, like, the worst things that could happen, you know, on air happen, and you learn how to, yeah. you, you learn how to roll with it, you know. Um, so that was, What yeah. town was that in, or what city was that in, That was Florida? Panama City, gotcha. Florida. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh so anyway, I, you know, you, you probably have those two teaching, right? Oh, you yeah. You can remember, oh, man, that didn't go so well, you know? No. Nope. Yeah. Always. I, I mentioned that. I mentioned on the podcast, but uh, with the masks, some girl, cute little girl goes, look at this big box of crap. And she pointed at the bottom. I'm like, I look, I'm like, you can't say that. She goes, no, I said crafts because it was a box of arts and crafts. Okay. So I overheard. I don't know. I said, I thought she said crap, but she didn't. But it was just funny. And. Her dad joked about it, and I emailed home, and it was a learning lesson. Like, crap, crafts. Anyway, there's many things. I've oh, we had a blooper episode 17. This chair broke. Oh god. Sat in it for an hour and two minutes. Yep. I yep. lean up to show the the shirt. Yep. Snaps. 
I want to see the video. Yes. That. Do you, yes. That probably will go viral. Yes. It's out there on our Instagram page and he's going to put it. Did you put it on the end of episode 20? Did you close out episode 20 with the GIF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. Did. Dave is going to add it on the gif of episode 20 the, of me falling out. My buddy Does Scott. Does it just crack a little bit or, or just wipe well, out? Feet, well, feet go up in the oh air. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh, we gotta, somehow we've got to pull that up so we can watch it. That'd be awesome. Let's go. He's, this guy's great. That sounds good. We're going to watch it on live. On, uh, give him a minute. All right. So what about change of subject? Did you do first and last? So that was first. Last. I don't think I don't think I did last. Um, I mean, like last thing. Your last thing that b- before you moved on. Um, gosh, I got to think of. I mean, I know one of the last things where I got to, which was um, quite gratifying, was I could do a show. We didn't do them very often, but we had uh, like severe weather kind of thing, and I did a lot of um, mornings, like anchoring the the morning shows on the weekends for a couple hours at a time. And we got to a point where we would do a show. Um, we had a big winter storm coming and we had really no script. We just had uh, the meteorologist. We had um, a couple people live, you know, with DOT to tell us how the roads were. We had a couple reporters out in the field and we just rolled with it. You know, which is like, that's, that is, um, it takes a long time to kind of get to that place where you feel comfortable doing yeah. that. But that was kind of gratifying. Um, but I'd done it for close to 10 years and I felt like, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't love it anymore. And I was actually kind of getting a little worried that, um, and I'm not, I'm not, um, impugning journalism. Like I think local news is so important. I just felt like my role was not necessarily making, um, the world a better place. Like I was doing... Like, I didn't want to report on every time, you know, something bad happened. Yeah. You know, if it bleeds, it leads kind of thing. Like, yeah. I didn't want to make people more cynical about our cities, as an example. Okay. Um, I felt like we oftentimes too, didn't put the stuff that happened in context. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're saying like 90% of the stuff is all negative and dying and right. crashing. I started to feel like I wouldn't watch the show that I was anchoring. Like, I, I just didn't love it anymore. And I worried that, yeah, like what people were thinking like who's going to live in Hartford or New Haven or Bridgeport because they turn on the news and all they see is you know bad stuff but there's a lot of great stuff happening too so I left journalism to actually go work for the mayor of New Haven to like do exactly that to try to make a mid-sized city work you know like to to to, so I was his communications director and so dealt with reporters but I was on the other side then so that's when you left. That was my next question. So you left to go. Was it DeStefano? That's right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I know him. I was there out there and I worked for Leap Leadership, Education and Athletics and Partnership. It was like it was on Jefferson Street. It yeah. partnered with Yale. We had 10 10 year olds. Um, I worked at the J, at the uh, Church Street South projects, which are oh, no sure. longer there across the street from the train station. Yeah. yeah. I lived there for the summer. I picked the kids up in the morning. We had breakfast. We went and did sports. We went and did academics. So it was great. And DeStefano's kid was a junior counselor. So he was in high school at the time. The college kids were the Is senior counselors. Or Jimmy. Uh, what's his, who's his oldest? Got to be his oldest. I think Danny's point. the oldest. Danny, yeah. So. so yeah, he yeah. was a cool kid. And DeStefano loved Leap. So he always helped us out. Yep. Um, no, loved New Haven. Yeah. So, and... I keep shouting out episodes, but one of my former campers from Leap is named Reggie. We had a, t- he was on episode two of Feeney Talks with oh, Friends, great. Le- great. Uh, uh, my Leap counselor. So yeah, no, great stuff. Um, did you get it? No, I'm, I'm not having a luck. Here. I got it. We'll throw, you can throw it in at the end. Trying right. to figure out how to, uh, what yeah. about, this is totally off tangent, but I have to ask. That's right. Dave Chappelle. You yeah. know Dave Chappelle? Sure. Yeah. So he has a famous skit. Okay. What did the five fingers say to the face? Do you know this one? I don't know that skit. I don't. It's, I'm, so, I'm intrigued. Uh, you got to go home and watch it. We'll is pull this, that uh, up too. Is this like a G-rated? Uh, uh, Probably not. But um, Dave Chappelle did a skit show called Chappelle Show. He, his whole skit, this scene, it was like Saturday Night Live, but a little yeah. more edgier and funnier, way funnier. It was like the best show ever. Yeah. Um, he dresses up as Rick James and he tells Rick James stories. A life and a day in Rick James. Okay. And Rick James asks his buddy, what did the five fingers say to the face? And the guy goes, I don't know. And he says, 
slap. Ah. So he slaps him. Oh, now, I knew. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was wondering where this was going. Now so, like, I got it. So, so like, I just, for me, a huge Chappelle show. And when I hear Derek yeah. slap, what the five. So maybe you think maybe like, what the five fingers say to the vote? Oh, I slap. Working, working the slapping. I, yeah. No, okay. no. All right. See, I went a different way with slap. I've been going, so slap, so you know, it's a Dutch name. And my ancestors were Dutch Jewish fishermen on that side. And it, a slap is a place on the beach where a boat could slap ashore uh -huh. without scraping the bottom of the boat. So it's, um, you know, like, oh, that's a slap on the beach, right? That okay. kind of thing. All right. So I tell people sometimes that for a long, long time now, slap has been associated with something you could rely on, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. right? And here I am. No, no, no. It's some, <laughs> something that provides some security and safety and whatever. Um, but that's the background of slap. But most people, the bottom of the ocean or the side on the bottom of the boat or the side of the boat. Well, that's a good question. I don't know if anybody's ever asked me that. Yeah. Like, the side or the bottom. Yeah. Where you can gently pull up safely. Yeah. yeah. No rocks. Not rocks. Exactly. Yeah, safe, secure. on the beach. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that hasn't helped, like, well, me go through middle school with the last name of Slap, my kids, right? And cause I'm too close to it. Like, I forget yeah. what a weird name it is. Right? Yeah. And most people put an extra P on at the end or they think it's short for something. It was, and it's, it's well, not. When I was growing up, it was like, what's your favorite drink? And it was like Hawaiian punch and they would punch you in the arm exactly any way to hit you charlie beat someone by a hair so they give you a charlie horse and then they pull your hair yeah, it's brutal kids are awesome yeah <laughs> so yeah slap is uh you know it, it's had its challenges right? could be like what what the five fingers say to the face or it could be a nice place. i'm gonna go home and watch them you gotta watch it yeah i highly suggest all my listeners all of you guys out there Chappelle show Chappelle is like one of my idols. He's hilarious. It's it's great. I mean, very inappropriate. Yeah. Not kid friendly. Right. But uh, hilarious. And you got to watch. Just put in Rick James Chappelle. It, it will be absolutely the first thing that comes up. All right. I will and never, it's a great meme. I will never too. think of my last name the same. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't. No, it's a beautiful last name. <laughs> no, and you have a connection with all Chappelle. Good. All good. All yeah. good. And speaking of celebrities and people, where so you're... You ever go to Gastro Park? Uh, I have been. The short answer is no. Like I know of it, and it's on my list of things. Gotcha. Like I want to. Yeah. You and ever, I know some of the people who are associated with it. You ever go to Zahara? Yes. Okay. Zahara. You're outside in Zahara. Yep. You got the um, baked. Uh, what is it? Cauliflower. Okay. That's my favorite down there. Anyway, and you got the dipping with the hummus, and you yep. got your spread. You can sit down and eat this meal, your favorite meal at Zahara, with four people. Any four people. Dead or alive, celeb or not celeb, who are you eating, who are you eating dinner with, Derek? Wow, four people. Yes. Um, okay, can I take my current family members out of it just so I don't get in trouble with yeah. them? Is Zoe, that... Zoe going to be mad at you? Or... No, but you know. Charlie? I, I, put it, I will always want to go to dinner with my wife. So I just, <laughs> just want to listen. We got a honey. disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hear that, honey? All right. Um, okay, so the first two... And this is, by the way, on the fly here. Yeah. So, right? So everybody's like, listen, just, you know, keep that in mind. Okay. Um, my father uh, passed away when I was 19. Um, and that would be pretty cool, you know, because it's been, I've been alive, uh, you know, a long time, right? Yep. With him not around, no kids, et cetera. Um, and my wife's mother uh, died just a few years later. And there's all these questions. I think like once you have kids, you know, you're like, I wish I could ask them yeah. this, right? Yeah. Um, what was I like at that age? Just all sorts of stuff. Um, so those those two. Uh, no, that's wonderful. Yeah. Would be would be on there, um, no question. I could keep going down the family um, road, but I but you I need won't. more than four. I mean, they have well, eight. I, they I have, have two more, right? Okay. Yeah. So one, um, I'll say my first hero. Uh, was Martin Luther King Jr. He was the first, you know, person, I read this biography of him, my dad gave it to me, that wasn't like a scratch and sniff book. You know, it was like, yeah. it was a real book. It was like 400 pages. And, and um, I would love to, I would, you know, his famous quote about the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Like, you know, I'd love to be able to kind of see, like do a check-in. Like, 
how are we doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, you had this dream that you articulated so well, and uh, and we're still marching there, and there's a lot to go, but I think that would be um, that would be pretty amazing. That's one one for me, definitely. I mentioned that before, so yeah, definitely. I love it. Now, do I get to ask you your no? Your if you want, well, I, I do want to know your. You know, I do. I do want to you, know. You have one more. I have. That's right. I have one more person, um, and I could go. I could go family. Um, but I won't, but I, you know, because it's like, you want to, you want to mix it up, um, a little bit and it, but I just want to make sure it could be anybody, right? Anybody. Wow. Wow. I like your deep in thought. I really appreciate this. You're really, I am. Like, you're taking this, this, this game is, very, you know, th this is, I like uh, the passion and the, uh, this is thoughtfulness. Um, all right. Uh, I, you know, maybe I'll go with, um, I'm thinking like a political leader. I'm a political mm -hmm. political person. Um, so maybe I'll go with, I got this, Abraham Lincoln. Okay. I'm thinking like, you know, we need, we need some strategies about um, the future of the country, bringing the country together, that kind of thing. So, you know, president, why not Lincoln? All right. All right. Great answers. What about you? So I'm going to do a different four this time. I played this game before. I said last time it was... Um, my grandfather, Patrick Feeney, yep. he never, I never got to meet him. He left my father's family when my father was young. So Patrick Feeney, I'm just reviewing. Okay. Martin Luther King, JFK, yep. and ODB, Old Dirty Bastard from the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> <laughs> that was last time. Okay. I'm going to do a new four today because, okay. you know, it's great that you asked. Um, who was it? Yeah, so yeah, the game was like, you kind of theme it. It's like family member, politician, musician, athlete kind of deal. You yeah, know? yeah, I was thinking about an athlete. Yeah, yep. pretty much like that. My so. favorite athlete is still alive now. So. Who's that? Larry Bird. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's on there. Yeah. That's so funny. Like, our last conversation brought up, I, I think I mentioned Michael Jordan or Anthony Mason, you know, the, the <laughs> hick from French Lick. I would love to have Larry Bird. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's see. Dinner. Mm. Chappelle, now that we talked about Chappelle, David Chappelle, definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's funny, so funny. Um, yeah, I mean, you could put together a great group of like comedians. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be, it'd be a very different dinner, right? Yeah. Like, it, Mitch yeah. Hedberg is one of my favorites. Okay. He died very suddenly, but he, he's not. He, maybe I'll save him for next show if someone asks. So thank you again for returning the question. Yeah. Chappelle. Um, Can I add one? Go for it, of course. John Prime. You know John Ooh, Prime? No, please explain. Who's he that? is this like folk singer, legendary guy. He just passed away, and he's for you know uh, Jim Chapitalane, who's a local guy. Dave, runs, you know these guys? I know Prime. Yeah, so uh, Jim is runs Divisible. He's a local musician, but and uh, we got talking about John Prime, and uh, if you, yeah, anybody's listening, look him up. Prime, he's got the most authentic, incredible P R I N E. Prime. Yeah, and he is this. He was a, a postal worker and he would write his songs in his head as he was doing his his routes and it's just some of like the coolest just most inspirational stuff anyways if i retire and i'm still able to walk i want to be a postman yeah yeah i was a paper boy and i just love walking the yeah okay you know, the addresses and meeting people and waving and so you all right with dogs and yeah okay yep i have a dog okay oh yeah so yeah speaking of dog my dog's name is barkley Okay. So Charles Barkley yep. was named after him. So he loved to have dinner with him. Nice. So Chappelle, Barkley, already, and they're going to just crack up and they have jokes forever. So that's going to be a very entertaining. So I may just stay with that theme of uh, characters, uh, funny guys. Listening to a lot of Joe Rogan these days because of the podcast. Okay. Uh, so Joe Rogan, throw him in. Yep. And who's another funny guy I like? Um, man, I'm on the spot. I did not expect to get this asked. I only asked, so thank you. Um, Chappelle, mm -hmm. Rogan, fine, we'll say Mitch Hedberg. Okay. He delivers these one-liners. He just looks at the floor. He's really flat and monotone. He's very weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hilarious. Like, the uh, escalators never break. They just become stairs. 
<laughs> or and he's, okay, yeah. like a Stephen Wright yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, yeah. I got a receipt for a donut. Like somebody's gonna say, "Hey, I need proof. Did you buy that donut?" And he's like, "Who needs a receipt?" Or some other ones are. He's nice. just great. Yeah, he's really dry. And you ever watch that show? Um, uh, what is it? Schoolyard uh, insults. Uh, where do you know what I'm talking about? Like where, mama jokes or something? Yeah. So like Will Ferrell does it. He's hilarious. Oh, and yeah. Will Ferrell and Mike, uh, Mark Wahlberg. And oh, they, they just, dad jokes. They sit back. Yeah, and forth they sit and there to, and they just insult each other. And yeah, the first one to laugh. to laugh. It's very funny. Yeah. All right, come on, give it a shot. Let's go. Throw something at me. You got a joke or a dad joke, and I'll try not to laugh. You brought it up. If I you know. Can. See, I can't believe I brought that up. <laughs> like, uh, what did one ocean say to the other ocean? Nothing. Just wave. So you have a t- you. This is like your uh, your go to, right? Yeah, these are second grade. Yeah. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> oh, see, <laughs> you could go all day. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Feel free I, to throw one in. I don't know. Again, putting on the spot. Never well, thought you'd uh, hear that. What What did the the bald man say when he got a comb for his birthday? <laughs> Thanks. What? I'll never part with it. <laughs> There you go. Have you See? heard that one? No. All right. All yeah. Right. I like it. And yeah. I'm going bald, so I could, I could use that one. <laughs> nice. What did the green grape say to the purple grape? Breathe, dummy. Breathe. Because <laughs> it's right. purple. All right. All right. That's good. Dave's like, Dave likes them all. Dave's you use awesome. these in class, right? Occasionally, of yeah. course. Yeah. 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 That's probably like six part of Six afraid of seven? A hey, six. Why is six afraid of seven? Come on, you have to know that one. Do you know that one, Dave? Uh, you know, I get, yeah, okay. Seven, eight, eight. Seven, eight, eight. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, Here we go, Dave. All right, he's All on right. it. All right. He's on it. All right, we, 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 is this either we reached a new high or we reached a new low? <laughs> yeah, well. This is something I've never done. Episode 21, Derek. This is it. You got, we're you doing dad jokes. jokes and dad this jokes. Is, next thing you know, we're going to play paper football. <laughs> there, it is a great pleasure being a dad to to embarrass your kids. Oh, you my know? goodness. So I do this thing. I learned this from my friend who's this, uh, he's, an, he's an actor in acting school at, at uh, Syracuse. And we would walk around and he would act like he was walking into the doors. He would kick his foot and, you know, like, at the, and go boom like this, right? <laughs> and so whenever I'm with my girls, because Charlie, he laughs, squeals, thinks it's so funny. Teenage to not want and so i'll be walking into like um, an office building or whatever with them a doctor's office you name it and they'll forget and i'll slam my foot against the door go boom like this and oh like and they're they're horrified and it just i laugh right. and laugh and laugh makes my can't day. wait first thing i'm doing when i get home tonight yep i have twin girls they're 12. oh you gotta do so it so they are turning it up the 12 year old is they're usually fantastic wonderful helpers they do they design and decorate everything Friends of Feeny, all of our flyers, wow, they're talented. t-shirts, awesome. posters. They add QR codes. They yep. are amazing, but they're starting to like, <sighs> yeah. get out, Dad. Or like, you know, I'm in, I'm in school. I'm practically in school right now. Yeah. And I'm like, no, Will, you're actually at remote learning you know, or something. You got it. Yeah, just give it right back. So yeah. yeah. But wonderful, stu- wonderful students, wonderful children. But they're, it's... They're hitting that middle school, feeling it. We had, and I, I, I'm not allowed to go into any more in this because I don't want to embarrass him, but um, <laughs> we, one of them had their boyfriend, okay? <laughs> this was the first time ever, okay, over for dinner. Literally last night. Wow. That's an experience. Whew. And my wife and I were both like, we can't believe that this is happening. You know, and I'm one of like those, oh, the boyfriend, let me get the shotgun, like that old trope. It's just more like, wow, we're, we're old enough to have kids yeah. who are having, and, and then, you know, you could have some fun with it. Like, yeah. just, you know. You didn't do the walk into the door in front of, in front <laughs> I of a new see, boyfriend? I didn't Come walk on. into the door. I didn't, I was very nice. I didn't, you know, because there are rules too. Like my, my daughter beforehand is saying, okay, don't talk to him. <laughs> and I was like, but I need, I'm, I'm kind of an extrovert. And by yeah. the way, like, you know, he's in our house. Like, I'm not allowed to talk to him. You could say hi, yeah. but don't ask him any questions. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm a former journalist. This is what I do. No. 
um, all sorts of different rules about what I'm allowed to say. So and, um, and that, I'll be in that predicament soon. You got any suggestions or advice in hindsight based on reflection? Gosh, I mean, I'm so new. I'm more like needing uh, yeah. advice. Um, Leave us some comments on dad advice. Yeah, any, yeah, how to handle the dinner, you know. So, What'd you have for dinner? Uh, what do we have? So I do all the cooking in the house. Um, especially since, you know, silver lining for pandemic is that I'm home all the time, like to cook dinner, which has been nice. So I did for the adults, cause the kids wouldn't like this. And actually my kids are vegetarian too. We did swordfish and, um, kale gnocchi, you know, that Ooh. little, yeah. From uh, Trader Joe's. Got any leftover? Good. That sounds no, delicious. I'll make that for you. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. And then we did, uh, fake chicken burgers and, mm. um, Tater tots for the kids. Nice, nice. Tater All tots three of your kids are very underrated. By oh the my way. god, that's, like that's top five right there. I think so. You throw that breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Tater tots. Yeah, they're amazing. Right, and you could do gourmet them up. Yep. Or you could just do a little herb and butter, like garlic, yeah. something, bacon yeah. bits if you're into that. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a vegetarian for almost a year now. Really? But I eat fish, so that swordfish is sounds you're a, delicious. You're a pescatarian. So I'm a pescatarian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel better? I mean, obviously it's better for the environment. It's yeah, like, you know, I did. It. My knees were hurting. I was walking okay. around the date. I'm a program director, and I was like, I play basketball. I ran. I, you know, not to brag, I'm real humble. I'm a modest guy, but I ran a marathon in Hartford wow, in 2010, awesome. maybe. No, no, no. 2000. Anyway, it was Hartford Marathon. I ran it two hours and 45 minutes. So maybe that messed me up, but my knees were feeling okay. in pain. Yeah. Watch this Netflix special called Game Changers about athletes and how they spin your blood and the blood is clearer for vegetarians and it's good for your bones and it's really cool. all these chemicals that go into your bones. Anyway, my knees are feeling great now. Good. And I'm I'm back to running outside, so we'll see. That's great. Um cheat every once in a while. My wife makes wonderful meatloaf. I sneak a bit. Uh Chick-fil-A sneak a little bite or two. Yeah. Went a little extra at uh, Parkville Market Spanish food. Okay. They did the uh, roast con pollo with uh, frijoles. So that's beans, rice, and chicken. And I just kept picking at the chicken. And it was like the greasy, like really flavorful yeah, chicken. Yeah, yeah. And after a while, I was like, ooh, I think I overdid it. Right. But delicious. Yeah, totally. Been to Parkville Market? Have not on my list. Oh, come on. Dying. You haven't been to Gastro or Parkville? I know, I know. Oh, you're too to busy go. cooking. Cooking a lot in session, but session will be over uh, June 9th, and that is on our list. Yeah, from someone, if you were to explain session to a second grader, <laughs> what's session? Um, Pros and cons, ups and downs. So it's like your re role and responsibility of a session. To a set. Well, so we have all these different committees, these groups, and depending on what the topic of the bill is, so let's say it has to deal with, so a second grader, I might say, there's a bill that says no school on Fridays, right? That would go to the education committee because that committee deals right with education and they would have a public hearing. So they would invite everybody who had an opinion about that bill to come in and listen. Well, and to, to voice it. So we'd hear from teachers, we'd hear from parents, right? All those different people. Then the committee members, the reps and senders make a decision about whether they want to pass that bill out of committee and let's say in this case, they pass it out of committee. And so that whole process, by the way, is the first several months of session. It's the committee's meeting, learning about different bills, having the public hearings, and then deciding which to pass. And then it goes to either the House or the Senate. It has to pass, obviously, both chambers. And then the governor can either sign, veto, or do nothing. And then after a month, it becomes law. So that whole process takes you know, uh, usually about five to six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're in session, out of session. Is there a, always, is it always June to? So uh, we have a two year summer. budget. So in the um, odd years that we're in now, we go in in January mm -hmm. and we get out in the first week of June. Okay. And uh, then we go back in February and it's a short session because we're just doing budget adjustments and it's February to May first week of May, and then it's an election year. So we get out a little early and then everybody, Senate and House, runs for re-election. Oh, wow. So okay. you're running every 16 months, if you think about it, which is a lot. Because your term's yeah. every two years. Right. 
Right. So by every the time, 16 months. Yeah, basically every 16 so months. So you go here. door knocking and yeah. campaigning neighborhood. Yeah. And you go all over West Hartford, yeah. Farmington, yeah. Burlington, yeah. and the west portion of Bloomfield. That's right. Why does Bloomfield get split? Um, well, it's just the way that they have to divide up the districts because every district in the state, there's 36 state senators and about three and a half million people. So we each have about 100,000 constituents. So in order to make the numbers work out right, some, dist- some towns have more than one. Um, West Hartford's big enough where it's not split up. Um, but, you know, every 10 years, by the way, we redraw the lines. Uh, okay. And we, unlike other states, we do it um, bipartisan, Democrats, Republicans. We get together on a committee. That process is starting now. And so some of the district lines may change a little bit. All right, nice. Is Bloomfield just split in two or three? Just two. two. Yeah. Or any towns or cities split in three? That's a good question. Um, I mean, it would only be like some of the bigger cities. Um, and I don't think so. I think like Hartford, Yeah, I would think that'd be unfair. Bridgeport have mostly two. two state centers. Yeah. Do you spend your time equally? Uh, a silly question to ask on the air, but I mean, do you spend more time in West Hartford or Farmington? Or you just spread yourself out equally? Well, I mean, you know, there's so, some things that are totally equal, like the the... Um, town council meetings and the town committee and all that stuff where, you know, that's once a month for each town. You go to um, all those? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, you know, and when, when invited, certainly. Um, so if there's 100,000 people in the 5th Senate District, right, 68,000 of them is West Hartford. Oh, wow. So, you know, and then there's, let's say, 25,000 Farmington uh, Burlington is a few thousand. Well, Burlington is more than a few. Burlington, I feel like, is eight thousand. Anyway, so you got you get the gotcha. point. Like the vast majority of the district is West Hartford. So just I end up spending more time there because I just have more constituents gotcha. from West Hartford. But I care about everybody equally. So who writes? What citizens write more policies to you, or like uh, what was that called? Constituent consi- constituents. Oh, as far as uh, suggestions. Yeah, who gives the most suggestions? Gosh, that's a good question. I get them. Keep it anonymous. You got any like off the wall policies that you can share? That or is it always anonymous? Can you share? No, I mean I've had some good ones. Like there was one from Farmington, or not Farmington, Burlington, actually, just a couple months ago. And in a way, we're going to get this passed, which is um, helping to make sure that um, people slow down for emergency vehicles. You know, so, right? Yeah, that's, well, that's an important, important one. Yeah. That should be universal. Absolutely. <laughs> and we want to make sure, like, we have those rules on the highways, but make sure that it's very clear um, to make sure that, like, volunteer firefighters and people, you know, don't lose their life as they're trying to save somebody's life. So, yeah. So that, yeah, that idea was just um, out of Burlington. So you get some good ones. I mean, ones. what's I'll changing? i try to think of something, like, if, if there's... Um, so someone didn't say, hey, let's... Like a, a no school on Friday one, like you mentioned for the kid, like no random. Like, oh, some really. Uh, like uh, I like want, that. I know there's, I don't know, if he, are chickens allowed in West Hartford or not? Because. That's I, a good question. I, I mean, think they are. Like, you I don't said, think they are. No, bees are allowed. I think the chicken got shot down. Bees, but not chickens. Correct. I thought it was like based on if where you are to your neighbor's house, you can have a chicken coop. Anyway, so that's yeah, something, something yeah. random. Yeah. Like I want chickens in West Hartford. No, I, I mean, not personally. Maybe, I don't know. I like chicken, but chicken eggs, eggs from the chicken. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, who knows? Because there are some towns that, that allow this. Yeah, so yeah. Or like, something. ooh, my, my daughter wants a pet goat. Can yeah. we pass that law? Can she write something to you? Would you help her out on that? Or is that... I am <laughs> always happy to look at pro it and goat? see. And, and sometimes, um, do they vote? <laughs> um, we do get a bear, bear hunting bill request. From, see, that's kind of interesting because when you represent like state senate, you have Burlington that's very rural, yep. and then you have West Hartford, and you have to try to, you know, you represent everybody, and you have to try to figure out what the best policies are. Oh, so you, if you pass it, maybe silly, but you pass it, you you can't just pass something for West Hartford and Burlington separate. You pass it as a whole. Uh, generally, but there's there are certain things that we pass where it says it's only applicable for. Um, you know, towns of, you know, certain population size, that, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, we do that all the time with, you know, businesses too, where we say it's, you know, it only impacts larger businesses because we don't want it to be, um, 
a burden or whatever on smaller businesses. Like the plastic bags, that's a perfect example where you're in the grocery stores, larger ones, but mom and pop, you know, the, the Chinese restaurant that you go to that might still use the plastic bag, like, you know, we carve them out. And some people might argue that we shouldn't have, but realistically, you know, that's, um, that was a compromise that we made in order to, to get that bill done. Have, what are the overall review and reflection of that? How do you think that's going? Did we, they were saying it was supposed to bring in some revenue or also help the earth. Are you seeing anything changing or any differences or what's the word over there? Yeah, so I think that, well, so one, we, we didn't get the revenue that the state had expected, but that's a good thing. Like, I don't think we ever should have done it for the revenue anyway. And it was only gonna be a year or so. It's like gonna phase in like, okay, you, you have to pay for a bag. You know, and I think I seem to remember it was going to bring like in twenty million dollars something to revenue, and then eventually it would you know phase out. So it wasn't like it was a consistent revenue stream, yeah. but it showed you I think that people were so ready to get rid of plastic bags anyways that that was the last straw, and they're just like I'm done. Yeah. You know, because you think about it, like Costco doesn't have plastic bags, Big Y had already gotten rid of plastic yep. bags, Aldi doesn't have plastic bags, so like I'm probably missing one or two. Um, Trader Joe's didn't have plastic bag, Whole Foods did so the business community was already moving there because that's what people want. I think in this case, the law was just like one final nudge that did it. And when you talk to younger folks, maybe even like the ones who are your students, they're oftentimes like they are the ones who are kicking us in the butt on the environment. Say, do you know how long that plastic bag is going to sit in a landfill or yeah. that there's more plastic in the, in the oceans than fish? Like, come yeah. on, you know, we got to change. Yeah. So we just read something. There's like an island in an ocean as big as Texas. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. Which is heartbreaking. Right. Right. And but, you know, we hear it like change is tough and people were, you know, didn't some people didn't love it. But that idea, there were municipalities that started doing that. There were certain towns that said we're going to ban the plastic bags. So that's how it started. So you don't always have to start with a state law. You know, you can start at a town level and then it catches on and then it becomes state. And we say that the states, this is a quote from, I think it was Daniel Patrick Moynihan, but like that the states are the laboratories for democracy. So we also do stuff in the state that catches fire, like the age discrimination bill. That'll become a national law, I bet you at some point. Um, I worked really hard on a pay, pay equity bill to ban the pay history question. So, you know, you, you don't get lowballed when you go and apply for a job and the employer says, well, how much do you currently make? You can't do that in Connecticut anymore. Um, we were the second state, second or third, I think, in the country to do that when I introduced that bill and got it passed. Now about half the states in the country. Um, nice. You can't do that anymore. So anyway, that's just an example of, you know, plastic bag, same thing. Where maybe so you someday. got the ball rolling. You, you got to start small. Yeah. And, and we each have the role to play, right? Like, it's not just my job to get the ball. You know, like we get these ideas, like I said, from constituents, great ideas. And that's the way it's supposed to work. Right? Yeah. Keep sharing your ideas with Derek Slap, Slap at senatedems.ct.gov. You also have a Facebook and Instagram page. Who runs that? Uh, well, I do the Facebook page. Um, vast majority of the posts. Sometimes there'll be somebody on staff that'll say, hey, do you want me to post this like it's a happy Mother's Day thing or whatever? You know, a graphic. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, but I do it. I mean, I, I'm posting on there. Instagram has been tough for me just because there's you only have so much time. And I know, like, <laughs> they say that nobody, you know, what, under 30 or something is on Facebook. Like my kids yeah. are like Facebook. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, Facebook's for old people. Yeah, exactly. So I should do more on Instagram, but I don't know. I'm reaching my you gotta limit. Get your gram game up <laughs> on the gram. Yeah. I do need to do more on Instagram. No, it's great. And it was a wonderful conversation. Uh, thank you so much. Of course. I've learned a lot about session and about passing bills and constituents and just, then we had some dad joke laughs. So it was a great chatting with you. Thank you always for all of your support. Uh, celebrity server at Rita, celebrity server at Donut Crazy. I know if I reach out to you, you will help support the cause and our mission of helping children and families. So that means a lot to me and our community. So you're the man. Well, thank you. I mean, what you do is incredible. I mean, you, you do just heroic stuff and you don't do it because you have to. Like you go above and beyond. And like I said, I mean, you're a father and you're a teacher, an educator. And then to do what you do on top of that is incredible. So yeah. I'm really, really grateful and um, so glad that we became friends. Yeah, very cool. 
So yeah, reach out to Derek Slap. This is episode 21. And this all can't be possible without our buddy over here, Dave, from Direct Line Media. Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Dave, he's going to put the gif on of me falling out of the chair somewhere, sorry, somehow. Sorry, I couldn't bring that up. I don't, I don't he, he'll get a stern talking to when the camera goes off. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're the man. Oh, and Memorial Day is not happening this year, but this was 2019. Friends of Feeney marched. We honored Joe Roman. He was an Iwo Jima survivor. And uh, wow. just we're missing... Our parades, yeah, yeah, that was a, our number one way of raising funds and getting the kids to march and get out. So I'm wearing it for Joe Roman. Th thoughts and prayers for Joe. Um, he was awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you at episode 22. Can you hit me with a with the five finger say to the face to close us out? A little slap? <laughs> say the whole line, come on. <laughs> Wait, tell me the full line here. What the five fingers say to the face, and then you and they slap. And then I slap. No, I just slap myself, not you, right? No, you, you're supposed to, but on the show. He slaps the other person. So oh, I, we're not. Know. We're not. We just passed the bill about violence. We're not. No, yeah, don't right. hit we it. We're not condone any. Let's any, talk about this. Any violence. Be a good friend. It's comedy. There you anyway, go. but thank you, Derek Slap. You're the man. Thank you, Dave. We'll see you soon. See you guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Dave.